Well, let's get to it. President Obama delivered his final State of the Union address on Tuesday night, focusing more on accomplishments than a public policy agenda. Democratic leaders in Colorado, including Senator Michael Bennett, praised the president's work in reviving the economy. Meanwhile, Republican Senator Cory Gardner was hoping for a more detailed outline of how the president plans to handle foreign threats. Patty, State of the Union addresses are a lot of pomp and circumstance, a lot of fun, but this being probably, well, this will definitely be the last time we'll see President Obama in this role. What did you think? Well, it was amazing how much he already sounded like a lame duck, and in fact, coverage almost got wiped out by yesterday's Republican presidential um, debate. He, um, to quote Jimmy Fallon, it went from Obamacare to I don't care. He was talking about his legacy, and why not? Because we know unless he does it by executive order, he's not going to get anything through in the next year. So it's not surprised that he would want to really try to remind people of what he believes he's done, and he has made some accomplishments. Whether the economy did come back, how much he had to do with it is debatable, too. But interestingly, he didn't get into his real legacy, which is... Donald Trump's candidacy and the other Republicans we see. He did talk about the need for more civility. I mean, he's talking about things like that. But as we saw from Thursday night, where you had Trump calling Obama a petulant child, and if there's a lot, we see petulance, and most of it was on the Republican <laughs> side. You had Cruz suddenly thinking he should be talking about the 10 sailors in Iran during the State of the Union speech. Everyone is attacking Obama. Um, and his legacy, and that's kind of the legacy he's leaving, is that, well, how many originally? Fifteen Republicans thought they could do a better job as president? Yeah, shrinking by the day as we uh, get closer to Iowa. David, um, I realize that this is uh, a bully pulpit of sorts, but it's January. What kind of advantage does the bully pulpit of a State of the Union address offer President Obama if he wants to have any influence on the upcoming election? Probably not much, because this it is, I think, the most boring speech one could watch with all these Politburo-like scenes of people standing up to to applaud. You know, the the amount it, it it gets to be more like baseball of how much action you get versus how the the long interims in between are uh, make it hard to keep one's attention, regardless of who's giving the uh, the speech. And it's got even worse ever since Reagan uh, had the idea of like, oh, let's find American heroes I can point out in the audience, and that you know that slows it down even even more. And so uh, I enjoyed not watching it and, and, and uh, just just reading the speech and seeing some highlights. Uh, in ter terms of Senator Gardner's hope that you'd get more specifics on uh, counterterrorism, Senator Gardner's a, a very optimistic guy, but. He probably also hopes that the Rockies win the World Series, and I will say neither of his hopes are going to come true in 2016. But to focus on the good things that President Obama said, here's one thing that he was right, and I think he's a uniter on, is that education isn't about space or time. It's not a brick and mortar building. It's not about one person, one methodology, or one opinion. Innovative education transcends such confines to ensure that our students are prepared to be the future of our country. Now, how to do that is subject to debate, but he really laid out a, a accurate and very helpful goal. Joey, uh, we had a lot of conversation, heard a lot from uh, President Obama about the reviving economy and, and what he says his role in it, in it. Here in Colorado, we definitely have a surging economy. Do you think those words have more credence in a place like Colorado and our purple voters? Well, see, I thought John Hickenlooper was responsible for a rebounded economy <laughs> here in Colorado. <laughs> Let's be honest about the criticism from Republicans. There was nothing Obama could say that they were going to like to hear. And there was actually, if you look at the responses, the reaction from, from, you know, from Washington, from our delegation there, they found agreement. You know, Doug Lamborn said he was um, agreed with the president that we're polarized, but then he says that President Obama is a, our most polarizing president. And Ken Buck agreed with him that our nation's biggest problems are uh, national security, um, creating more jobs, and he, he even agrees that gun violence is a problem in our country, but he disagrees with the courts, and then he doesn't go on to say what the Republican response to that is, what, what's the course that Republicans take? And I don't think we've heard that clearly from the presidential candidates yet. Look, you can mark out Barack Obama's name at this point and write Hillary Clinton, because that's what they want to do, is to tie this president to Hillary Clinton. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know. You know, the rebounding economy, we, we've done very well here in Colorado, but we have very unique reasons why we've done very well here in Colorado. So I don't know how much credit you can give President, president Obama for for what's going on in Denver. Sure. Uh, Miguel, I think Joey brings up a good point about Hillary Clinton. 
Obama's base right now, his big fan base, um, can look back at eight years and probably point out a lot of victories that they're in favor of. Where does that base go from here with the very likely candidate of Hillary Clinton on the Democratic side? Great question. I actually might be one of the few that is uh, very happy to have this president that we've had. Uh, for one, just starting with health care. I am a uh, beneficiary of the Affordable Health Care Act. Prior to the Obamacare, it was like people like to call it, uh, I didn't have health care for many years. So there's a lot of uh, new voters that can relate to the same issues that I relate to. Um, one thing that Hillary is a proponent of is of course uh, children and the lack of a, a attend you know a, a care for those that are in need. I hate to use the word at risk, but it's more on re receiving of services. So mm -hmm. that you know they just don't have that opportunity to get a hand up in this world. You know, in when we're dealing with uh, children in, in poverty situations, uh, we have, and that's one thing that that uh, Hillary Clinton started when she first thing she did when she got out of uh, law school was went and worked for the Children's Defense Fund when it was getting started up. So when you see that she took the different road and going towards uh, wanting to help poverty children rather than make millions of dollars when she graduated number one at, on her in her class where uh, Bill Clinton was only I believe number six or seven <laughs> so when you see that her graduation and then her interest just coming out of law school you can figure that that's going to carry forward into her presidential uh, campaign